What's going on guys, Breakman17 and welcome to another Breakman video. Um, this video is being made in part with the YouTube Model Builders EMAG team. Um, I'm writing an article about building these in-scale signals and this is the video for building them. Uh, I know some people do better being able to watch uh, these being built, but um, this is what we are building. Uh, it'll be an in-scale searchlight signal. It'll be a little bit taller than this one. Um, I built this one as my prototype number one, but um, it's going to be this, but um, this can be scaled up for much larger scales uh, if needed. But um, I know in scales kind of looked over scale, so I wanted to show how to build these um, in scale searchlight signals. And you can also do three aspect. It's very much a building the head than putting it on the support stand. So um, what you're going to need, um, of course, soldering iron, solder, uh, tools if you need them, an exacto knife, and a file uh, will be your most important. Um, you're going to need flat styrene, uh, sheets of it works best. Uh, you're also going to need tube styrene. I'm using, um, I don't recall what styrene this is. I think I've thrown the package away, but you can choose whatever thickness for your heads. Um, it kind of varies by um, what you like and whatnot. So uh, kind of play around and build a couple heads before you start building these signals and figure out what styrene you want to use. But I'm using for my support stands number 224 1 8 inch tubing. Um, I believe it's the smallest tubing they make without it being solid rod styrene from evergreen uh, scale models. Um, you can get a pack of this for three or four bucks or something like that. You can do a bunch of signals with it. I mean, this is one piece, and I believe there's six pieces in a pack. So um, you're also going to need silver or uh, silver and black paint, super glue, some kind of filler material. I know some people use bondo. Um, this is for covering the hole at the top of the support tube. Um, you're going to need a pen, something to write on, 9 volt batteries, resistors, uh, red, yellow, and green LEDs. If you're doing three aspect or three colors, if you're just doing two, you will need, uh, of course, whatever two colors. That varies depending on what you're building. And paint brushes. That should be just about everything you're going to need to build these signals. So uh, I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit, and I'll show you how we're going or how I start um, by setting these signals up. Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to list out everything you're going to need here uh, right quick. You're going to need a soldering iron, solder, along with your hand tools, X-Acto knives, files, tweezers, evergreen 224 1 8 inch tubing along with 1 millimeter sheet styrene, black silver paint, paint brushes, CA glue, canopy glue, plastic filler material, green, yellow, red LEDs, resistor, a 9 volt battery, and a pen or a pencil. That should be just about everything you need. I just wanted to go ahead and list that all out because I know I didn't put the titles in. So, all right, let's zoom in and build this. All right, so as I start by moving a lot of this stuff away, um, a lot of this stuff we're not going to need till later on. Um, right now, we're going to focus on the LEDs and getting everything set up to make this a lot quicker later. So we're going to move all of our tools and paint brushes and other stuff. Um, go ahead and turn your soldering iron on. Have it fired up and ready to go um, as we get going here. So, all right, so what you're really going to want, your 9-volt battery, your LEDs, and your resistor. I need to find my LEDs now and figure out what colors are which because I have them all laying out right now. So, um, I know for sure I have my green one right here. Um, I don't know if you guys can quite see it against the styrene here. Um, but when I set up these LEDs, what I'll do is I'll test them before I um, put them in the head. And I'm just testing, of course, to make sure that they work. Nothing's not wired to say. And I just do this by holding everything together on this 9 volt battery. That's another green LED. That one there is green. Yeah, that's the green bay. I should probably put these away as I build them. It'd probably be a good idea. I get a pack of them out, and then I leave them out. And then they get scattered across my desk. But lesson learned there. Always pack your stuff up when you're done. Especially because I buy these in five pack uh, bags. Um, you can use whatever LEDs you like, depending on your um, scale, will, um, of course, determine your size of LEDs. I'm using these little um, surface mount micro LEDs. Um, one thing I should add, I did not throw this in at the beginning, you're also going to need canopy glue. Um, I totally just thought about that here. Because um, you cannot super glue LEDs. Let me get these out so I can show you. Um, I'm using formula... 560 canopy glue. Um, all that does is glues the LEDs in. Uh, I don't know what difference it has over super glue. I just know super glue does not hold LEDs down. Um, to 
totally forgot about that there at the supp uh, supply list, and I'll throw that in there and probably make a side note. So you guys have probably already heard that, but you will need that. And as we go along here, like, like I said, I'm just holding everything together and checking it against a 9-volt battery. That's my... There it is. So now what I'm doing is I've got my... I've got a chart written out here. And it should determine, or it shows the way I have everything set up. So what I'm doing is I've got my positive side of my uh, battery here and my negative side on, or my negative side here. And then I write everything out. So uh, from the positive side, I've got the gold bar on my uh, resistor here is facing into the LED. So the first wire will connect into the LED. Or, uh, yes, sorry. This wire here will touch the gold side of the resistor and then of course the LED is in line and it goes to the negative side and that causes the LED to light up. So then what I do is on the side that's going to touch the LED I'll take my black paint and of course keep track of which side is going to touch your resistor and I'll take my black paint and my little paintbrush here and I'll paint the very end or a little bit back from the end, but I'll just paint that wire black. And what that does is I um, I uh, solder all of the ends that go to the resistor down to one resistor, and then I put a um, four-way switch on the other ends. And what that allows me to do is have a red, yellow, green, and extinguished. Um, if you're doing just standalone. Um, cosmetic signals. If you're doing actual signaling, of course, you'll have these hooked into uh, uh, into your uh, signaling decoders or uh, whatever system you use to control your signals. But this can be set up to whether you've got resistors on every single one. I use them with one resistor on one end because I know I'm not going to feed power in through multiple um, inputs. So I don't have to worry about the light sharing um, electricity in terms. I know that's kind of an issue with uh, um, doing electrical stuff. Sometimes these LEDs will dim out if you have more than one feeding in. I know some guys will do uh, red and yellow lights at the same time, other little stuff like that. But So there's my red, or my green and my yellow. And then my red over here are in single bags. So you get this one out here. And essentially doing the same thing here, just getting it out. Uh, we've already got one resistor out, so we don't need to pull that resistor out of the bag, but getting it all pulled out. And I get ones that have plastic on the ends, so I have to pull the plastic off the very ends. But just touching that resistor to the, or making sure the gold side's up on that resistor, and then just touching them to the battery. And I actually have this battery backwards for the way I want it. And there's that. So it's that easy. Just checking everything and then getting it all to where it's all set up makes wiring later a lot easier when you're not having to try and find it and wrestle it all. And I've tried using Sharpie before, um, but Sharpie just kind of rubs off, especially on this wire and really on any kind of wire. That's why you have to use paint to mark all your wire and whatnot. Or at least that's why I use paint. I know some guys use paint marker when they're designating stuff, but I just use the paint I'm going to use on the signals. I've already got it out and it's there. So, so there it is. All three of the LEDs. Done to done. So now what I'll do is I'll get a unit out. Let's see. Who's the lucky winner tonight? And of course, you can gauge this off of actual um, signal standards if you have a blueprint for them. I just kind of build these at different sizes for fun. Like the my prototype one I have over here is built at cat, or the head is at window level. This one we're going to build is actually going to be a little bit taller though. So, take my pin here, and all I do is I stand it up, and I just kind of figure out where I want that head to sit. So. Um, if I'm going to put one up above, I want the top of my tube to be about a head above the locomotive cab. As you can see here, I have a line across it right there. 
So my head's going to sit just below that line. Um, and that's what you have to remember when you're cutting these is, um, or at least the way I do it, is I'll take my tubing and I'll cut it and then I'll drill a hole just below the top and my head will sit on that. Um, you could easily put your head up above it, but um, it's going to be very hard to glue because you're going to have to super glue the very bottom of that head to the top of that tube. So I just cut mine. Actually, we'll go a little bit taller. We'll probably go another half head taller. So I just cut mine. And then I'll take my X-Acto knife or whatever I have available. Sometimes I have my drills set out. And I'll drill a hole through, and that's where my LE, or my magnet wire will run back and uh, behind everything. So, so there's our support stand. It's going to be a little bit taller than the unit this time around. So now we don't need our locomotive anymore. We'll put it back in the box. And I'm going to break away for a quick minute and take a quick picture. So give me one second. All right, guys. Welcome back. Um, we are going to now um, build our head. And the nice thing about building this head is uh, we can cut this back piece as big as we want to start with, and it doesn't matter. So. Um, I kind of try and gauge myself off the stand. As you can see, I found a clamp to put my stand on so I can stand it up. Um, convenient, right? So I kind of gauge off of this. Um, as you can see, I already have a box cut out, notched out here, so I'm just going to kind of notch that same size box out of this next piece. And we can cut it square right now, and the reason we have that file for later is we'll file the actual circle target. But, there we go. And then we'll cut off any burrs or whatnot here. I don't have to right now, like I said, it all gets sanded, but there's our target. Now what we need to do is put a hole in our target. And I'm actually going to use a small drill to do this and all I'm doing is putting a hole and you want to put it just below the center of the target and this gives you a starting point for bringing your magnet wire through and we're through. Alrighty. So now I've got a real small hole inside my target here and then what I'll do is I'll take my X-Acto knife and just spin the blade inside of that to increase the size of that hole. And that's all there is to it. So now what we'll do is we'll take that and we'll run all of our LEDs through it and glue them into place. And the nice thing about doing a searchlight signal is it's all essentially the same head so we don't need to worry about LED placement as much as we do just getting them set in there. So as you can see now I have my head strung through the first LED or the first LED strung through the head and what I'll do is I'll take this LED and I'll bend it back um, find the front of it then grab both of those wires parallel with each other and I will try to do this as close to the LED as possible but I will take it and just give it a 90 degree bend and all that's going to do is when I pull this up to the head it's going to allow me to pull that all the way through but that LED is going to catch almost like a rim um, and it will just sit right on that rim and then from there we'll just glue everything in So I'm going to glue these LEDs onto the head and we'll come back and take a look at it all built up Alright guys, welcome back. Um, as you can see here, I have glued in, um, I may have to crop this video so you guys can see, but I've glued in the LEDs, um, they are mounted in the head, and the head is still square. And then I've also taken my tube styrene and I've drilled a hole right up here in the front, uh, almost to the top, and that's going to allow my signal to actually sit a little bit taller um, than this tube. Uh, I'm going to have to backfill a little bit, but um, all you have to do now is, now that your LEDs are glued on, or should be at least, be very careful if they're not fully glued on, but take your wires, cluster them together. You may have to twist them up a bit. 
to get them to all sit together but just feed them in through that hole and I drill a hole back and then I slightly angle it down in an attempt at least to uh, make feeding these wires a little bit easier and I would hope that this goes a little bit easier And there we are. Now I've got all six of them fed in. And all we're just going to do is just feed these wires down the chute. And they'll pop out at the bottom. And then we just feed everything just like we would. And just kind of work out the kinks and any of the longer wires. Just take them and roll them in. Just trying to kind of level everything out. Try and orientate these wires also. I need to rotate these around here. That way my head sits backwards the way it needs to. And there we go. So all my wires are now fed down through the pipe and uh, my head is now sitting on top of my stand, which is sitting a little bit tall, but I think that'll be okay once we get the uh, head sanded down. Um, once we put the cover over the LEDs and then we sand that head around, I think we'll actually be able to level that out a little bit more um, and bring it in a bit, but um, I guess it's not as bad to uh, to glue in. I guess if you were just going a little bit taller on that head or bringing that head up higher on the stand, it may be a little bit trickier to glue with less of that head touching, but um, I'm going to take a quick break here and take a picture of this and we will uh, get back to gluing it and proceeding on with uh, the sanding of the head, so give me one minute. Alright guys, we're back again, and as you can see, we have the full um, signal built here. Um, as you can see, we have the target up on top of the um, support stand. So now what we need to do is, um, you can do one of two things here. Um, e either way, you have to do both of them. You can either put the cover, I already have a piece of this out. You can either put the cover on the LEDs, which is that crested cover, or you can round off the corners on your target. Um, I like to put the cover on and then round off my corners. It gives me something to gauge on in terms of the size of how uh, much room I need to give myself around the cover so it's a little more consistent. I hate to file off one side real skinny and then the other side be real big. But the way I do my covers is if you just take this tube styrene and flush up the ends. So just take it and then put a straight down cut on it. And then somewhere out here towards the end, give yourself a nice 45 and then find your styrene you just shot somewhere. So but that's all I do is just take it and just 45 it and just cut into your tube and then if you're smart enough you put something there to block it. Oh that was bad. Well maybe not so bad. So there's one cover that I've cut out there and it's kinda half circled and you can kinda guess and check on these as you go. And that is not quite big enough, so we're going to cut back a little bit more on these. You almost want the full tube in terms of how big the cover is. But the nice thing is once you cut one angle, you can go back and, and just cut straight down on the next one to make two. Or if you mess the first one up, you've got that second one ready to just straight down cut. But in theory, it'll sit on top of it like that if you can get your LEDs bunched together just right. And I'm actually going to take mine and run my X-Acto knife around the inside here. Actually, I lied. I'm going to take my file. I have a little triangle file here somewhere. And I'm just going to work the, the edge that's going to touch the signal. I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit bigger.
and it's just kind of kind of open up to that LED a little bit more. So once you just kind of work that inside out a little bit. That's all there is to it. You just kind of work that inside out so you get it to sit up on top of those LEDs a little bit better. And you just, just trying to get it close at this point. And you want to make sure the colors still show out of it. So it may, may take a couple of test fit ups. But once you get that on there, you glue it on and then fill it, of course, with a bondo. There will be a little bit of cracks around the edges um, if you don't quite get the LEDs to sit in tight together. Um, if you need to, what I've done before is cut out that bottom. Um, whoop. I'm popping up LEDs now. Cut out the bottom of that cover and um, just kind of fill it in later. That's actually a little bit better. So now I've got them sitting up there. It's a little bit off center, but we can fix that when we go to file this down. So I'm going to glue that down and take some pictures and we'll come right back. Alright guys, now we've got that cover put on I've taken the pictures. I'm going to um, cut this head down and circle it out a little bit more. And what I'll do is I'll take the edge, the corners and put it out and I'll kind of 45 them with an X-Acto knife. Make more of an octagon with real small corners. Just kind of bevel those corners off. And it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, file down. You're just not quite filing as much. Especially on the bottom of that head. I'm sure you guys can't see it, but um, I don't know how well it picks up. But now it's a little bit more of a stop sign looking. So all we'll do is take our file here and just kind of start to uh, work out the corners here. And uh, make sure everything's glued down nice and tight. Now is not the time to go ahead and bust that head off. But the other thing you're going to do here in this phase is also kind of start to... Um, bring in any of the sides that are a little bit bigger. Like I know my left side sticks out a little bit more than my right side so I'll just take that file and run it along that right side. Kind of start to work in that bottom corner. Flush it up a bit. This is where you take your exacto knife and just kind of start to trim out a little bit. kind of trim off some corners and then go back and clean it up and then see where you are and like I said that's just the biggest thing is just trying to get that all to sit back down and match in size. Um, the other thing here is also trying not to nick your uh, support stand up too much with the file. That's one thing I did with my prototype signal was I uh, nicked the support stand underneath the signal, which you almost kind of have to do to get the bottom of the head if you don't sand it before putting it on, but it's a little bit easier to sand it after you get it on. Also helps with spacing and sizing and whatnot, but um, just trying not to mess that support up too much is almost your biggest goal here when you're doing the head. Now, with the guys who have the Bondo and filler and whatnot, of course, you can kind of fill that support back in. And I guess while you're here, you could kind of sand that tubing down a little bit, too, to kind of match, but that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to take a little bit more off this left side here while I'm here. So, but that's all it is, just working a little bit at a time here just to kind of round that head off a little bit and then getting your set up that looks pretty good and then just going back with your exacto knife and cleaning up the edges and whatnot getting rid of some of that plastic dust and whatnot you've got on the head and of course using paint brushes and whatnot also help with removing that of course dry paint brushes wouldn't want to use a wet paintbrush. 
It must be sitting pretty well. So there it is. That's rounded off now. Actually, I'm going to work a little bit more on this upper corner. This is the thing is just kind of fine tuning it and then stepping back and looking at it and then fine tuning it again and then so on and so forth. So, but once you get it to a size you like, it just kind of starts to fall into place. So, and then, like I said, you may need to sand that support a little bit or file it or whatever you've got just to kind of hide any of that neck marking from hitting it with the sand. But there it is. That's the final um, build portion. Um, so what we'll do now is just kind of fill in that hole at the top and then we'll paint it. So, again, I'm going to take a couple of pictures right quick and then we'll come right back to um, filling it and painting it. Alright guys, I've now taken pictures of the final signal here. Now that we've got the head all rounded off and built up, um, I'm actually going to file a little bit off the back here. A little bit of a lip. That's the other thing. Kind of roll your file around. Make sure all your edges are nice and shaved. But um, Once you get all that done, take your filling compound, whatever you're using. I'm using a wax material that kind of sets up like plastic once it's in and that's what I'm going to cover all my cracks with. Like I said, I know some guys use a Bondo um, so it's kind of just up to you and what you use for scratch building and filling. Um, guys who use or guys who custom build shells and whatnot um, are probably the guys to ask for what they use. I have no clue where you get this stuff. I know this is just um, like I said, a wax that kind of sets up and paints really nicely too. That's the nice thing I, lo I love about this stuff is it paints really nicely. So, All right, I've got the hole there filled. And I don't think I really need to fill anywhere else. Everything else looks to be a nice tight fit. What isn't filled over in super glue. So we'll give that a minute to kind of set and uh, we'll get our paints ready. And it's kind of up to you as to whether you do the the target first or the support. I've done it both ways. There's advantages to both. The biggest thing is just trying to really get the small spots between the target and the support post itself. I'm going to use my little tiny um, brushes just for the sake of doing this. And painting the support is kind of a two-part process. Um, I usually paint the upper half and then go back and paint the lower half. There we go. But I'll, I'll paint the upper half from about a halfway point up and let that dry and then go back and paint the lower half. And uh, depending on what paint you use, sometimes it blends real nicely. But this is where the silver, or if you can't find silver, I guess gray would work. Uh, if you can find silver, the better off you're going to be in terms of painting it. I think it looks a little bit better done up in silver. But we're going to go. Let's see. We'll do the we'll do the support first, so I can go back and do the target. So, like I said, just pick a halfway point and just kind of start painting away. I use a uh, Tamiya paint. It's nice. It's a nice paint. I do I like it. I know not a lot of guys like it. I think it's a good paint. It works well in both brush and airbrush. It is a bit on the expensive side though. Depending on how much you go through. I really like their silver though. I think their silver sets up when it dries. I think it sets up really nicely. I think it looks a lot better dry than it does wet too. So, just paint, like I said, right around that, right around that tower and try and get it nice, nice and even spread. And if you need to, multiple coats can be done. Of course, it's all to the builder's discretion and choice. 
and then make sure you also get the top of your support stand. And I can already see all this paint is starting to run onto the target. That's why I chose to do the support first. Because then back when I go back and do the target, I know all the, it'll cover all that paint that's run up onto the target. So. so there's the upper part of the support painted. And uh, that one may need another set of, uh, or another layer after that. But I'll give that just a minute to kind of start to sit down. And then we'll start to work on the black. And then when I do the black, I'll usually try and go, I'm going to need my little brush to do this actually, the inside of the target. But I do the inside of the target, and then I keep a uh, couple, another small brush that's clean, and I will wipe off the um, LEDs with it, just to make sure I don't get any paint on the LEDs. So, I guess while that stand dries, I can paint the front side of this target. And just a little bit of black, and you're just going to paint that target black. Uh, the housing itself, of course, and uh, the cover. Weather cover, the target, the housing. Nice and easy. No rushing to this part. So, all there is to it, just a little bit of work involved in making these. That's my only thing I'm wondering about in terms of making these for sale. It's just a little bit of work involved. Come back here, and I'm already getting silver paint all over me now. But I also paint the back of the target. And then just kind of right around where the support connects in. And that's that. Now we can go back and just kind of finish and touch up silver, especially in the spots where I just touched it before it could dry there. So, and then in the other light areas where you're still seeing some of that white from the styrene. I do like this Tamiya silver. It does seem to spread out nicely when you just kind of apply it. And kind of touch up any spots where some of that black may have leaked off the target. And that's all there is to it. You just let that dry now and then, um, of course, hook all your commons. Um, like I said, I mark all mine. So all the commons will be soldered together under one and the resist will be put on. And then you solder in all your leads. And you have a working signal, unless you're going to a decoder, of course. Then you will solder into the um, controller board. So but that's all there is to it. Now, we just wait for that to dry and clean up paint supplies. So, I hope that helps some of you guys. Um, if I need to go back and break down any parts, I can surely do another video. But um, do let me know how this works for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description below. Or you can get a hold of me at stmason17 at gmail. I'm usually pretty good about responding to people. But uh, that's pretty much the basics to building an in-scale searchlight signal. Now as you build these you can vary them and add different things but that's the basic structure itself. From here you can add ladders and nameplates and all kinds of other things to the bottom of it but that's it for the most part. So, Alrighty guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. For those of you that were in the article, hope you enjoyed the article and um, I hope this helps you with your model railroading.
especially making cheaper signals. I know it's saved me a lot of money, a little time consuming, but for the money you save in this, I think it helps. So, Alright guys, hope you all enjoyed, and uh, I hope your signals look absolutely stunning.